Thank you so much. What a blessing to be here. I have a feeling y'all are the hyper crowd, right? I could already tell. Well, like he said, I flew in from Dallas yesterday, told my husband, I'm gonna go to Michigan to get warmed up. Did y'all see it on the news? It has been nuts back home. I mean, we didn't know you had to pick between snow or electricity. We used to always hope it would snow, but we didn't know you had to let go of electricity if you get snow. So it has just been crazy back home. But I tell you what, it is beautiful here. I mean, having heat, water, electricity, you have Wi-Fi. It's a neat concept you have here. <laughs> Pray for Texas, yeah. So um, anyway, I'm so excited to be here, and I just met the pastors last night. Um, I told them that I was looking on the website, looking at their name and looking at the different church members, and I was thinking, am I going to the Netherlands or Michigan? I had no idea this is such a Dutch community. Are some of you Dutch? I love that. You know, I've ministered in Amsterdam. I have one book in Dutch. It's Dream Big, and they call it Dream Groot. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just honored to be with y'all. I think we're going to have fun today. Um, how many of you have never heard me before? Oh, man, I asked the first service, Pastor, did you warn them? And you didn't, did you? You know, when I call to order Domino's pizza, they'll say, does your mommy know you're doing this? <laughs> I always go, no, but my husband does. <laughs> hey, you got a book there. I love it. But yeah, I know I sound like a kid, um, but I, I was telling the first service, this lady in Austin, she said to me one time, I know why you sound like a kid. I said, dear God, please tell me. <laughs> she said, because most of us stop dreaming when we were kids and you wake up the dream in us. So the, the dream that, you know, when you were a child, you stopped dreaming. So people call me the cheerleader of dreams. So I'm here to awaken those dreams in you. Does that sound good? Okay. So I, um, I started developing myself in personal growth years ago. And I heard Dave Ramsey make this statement. He said, if you want to be rich, study rich people. You want to be skinny, study skinny people. You want to be successful, study successful people. So I do, I study a lot of successful people and I was reading a book by a very successful doctor who's written many books. His name is Dr. Seuss. <laughs> and he, this is about my level. And he made this statement. He said, you have brains in your head and feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you're the one who will decide where to go. Do y'all think it's as deep as I do? <laughs> You're the one who's going to decide basically what you're going to do with the rest of your life. So I like to teach people how to awaken their dreams. And it's not just like a cute little message I thought I'd come up with. I want to tell you why it's so important that you have a dream, that you have a vision for your life. First of all, Proverbs 29, 18, God's the one who said, where there is no vision, the people perish, Right? You know, I looked up the word perish, and it means die. I looked up the word die, and it means die. So I was like, <laughs> starting to catch on. If, if we don't have a dream, if we don't have a vision, we're just existing. So let me, let me explain it like this. Let's imagine as soon as church is over, you go jump in your car, and it is pouring down rain outside. And you turn on the car, and it turns on fine. The heater works. The lights work. The radio works. Everything seems to work. It's pouring down rain, except for one thing, the windshield wiper, which I just happen to have. How many of you know you're not going anywhere? Because as long as your vision is impaired, you'll stay where you are. And it's the same with life. If you don't have a vision for your life, then you'll be exactly where you are today next year at this time. How many of you don't want that? I don't. We should always be going to the next level, right? So I'm going to share with you real quick, I won't take much of your time, how to get a vision for your life, how to start dreaming so that this year is the greatest year you've ever had. You ready? Okay. So I want to say, how do you get started? My first point is you just start with a blank page. You start with a blank page. And let me explain it like this. Years ago, when I was um, working with my dad, we were 
redecorating our offices, renovating the whole place, putting hardwood floors in, painting the walls, things like that. And meanwhile, I was over in France speaking at a conference. Well, the girl who was decorating my office, she texted me and she said, Terry, what do you want on this giant wall that your desk faces? Well, I texted her back and I said, a vision board. And she texted me back, huh? I said, I want a big vision board because I want to put pictures and images of where I see the ministry going. So she said that she found a cork board in the office that nobody was using. She found a big gold frame and she put it around the cork board and she hung it on the wall. When I got back from France, I was just amazed at how beautiful the offices were. And then I saw the vision board and I kept thinking, oh, I can't wait to put pictures up there. Well, since I'd been gone for two weeks, I was having to, you know, get caught up on all my work and I got behind and stuff. But here's my point. I cannot tell you how bad it bothered me. Every time I would look up from my desk and see nothing. And here's my point. If you see nothing, you can expect nothing. If you see nothing in your future, you can expect nothing in your future. Well, it didn't take me too long. I started putting pictures and images up of things I wanted to accomplish and places I wanted to go. And I mean, I was putting crazy things, financial goals and conferences I wanted to speak at. I put a fake picture. This is a totally fake picture of me and John Maxwell. I cut it out and I said, I speak at events with John Maxwell, acting like we're buddies. I went to the bookstore and I posed in front of the bookshelves and acted like, you know, I'm a best-selling author. I was just posing in front of the bookshelves. I hadn't even written a book when I did that. I put um, a picture of Oprah Winfrey. I put the White House. I put the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders on my vision board. My husband said, you still want to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader? <laughs> I said, no, Rodney. I want to minister to the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. He said, well, I didn't know, because sometimes they pick old ones. I didn't think that was funny at all. But anyway, here's my point. There's a principle in the Word of God that you become what you behold. You become what you behold. Whatever you keep before your eyes, it will eventually show up in your life. Is it a coincidence? Here I am walking into a bookstore and seeing my books on the shelf. Here I am speaking at events with John Maxwell. I could go on and on. Um, here I am getting a selfie with Oprah Winfrey, or here I am invited to the White House, or I love to shove this one in my husband's face. I'm on the 50-yard line of the AT&T Stadium teaching the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. <laughs> now, let me just say, the reason I share this with you is because I want you to understand this principle that you become what you behold, but if you see nothing, you can expect nothing. Once I started giving myself permission to dream and just dreaming as big as I could, is it a coincidence they started happening? Not one bit. Now, let me tell you real quick, because you might even think, well, that's good for you, but what about me? Well, I want to share with you this. This is a simple way to kind of help you start dreaming and setting goals for this year. You know, there was a friend of mine who had the opportunity to minister to the actor Will Smith. So he said he went to his house, and when he walked in, he saw this big glass wall with like 150 little index cards all over the wall. And he asked him, he said, what is that? And Will said, that's my next movie I'm working on. He said, those are all my different scenes, and I just move them around until I get them the way I want them. He said, every good movie has ups and downs and conflicts and victory and good characters and bad characters. He said, I just move them all around until I like it. And my friend was looking at this, and he said, this looks so confusing. He said, how do you even know where to start? And you know what Will Smith said? That's the easy part. He said, you always start with the final scene. You decide how you want it to end, and then you work towards it. Well, see, it's the same with you, with your dreams, with your goals. You decide, how do you want this year to end? In fact, I like to explain it like this. Let's imagine it's December 31st of this year. It's New Year's Eve. You got your party hat on. You know, I would imagine it's bitter cold here in Michigan. And let's imagine you turn to your friend on New Year's Eve and you say, this has been the most amazing year of my life. What would need to happen for you to say that? Whatever it is, 
write it down. Does that mean you paid off that MasterCard $7,456.12? Does that mean that you lost 30 pounds? You got a promotion at the company. You finished two more semesters of college. You paid off your school loans. What needs to happen for you to say, this has been the greatest year of my life? So you got first step. So number one, you start with a blank page. Number two is you use your imagination. <clears throat> use your imagination. Do y'all remember the story in the Bible where in the, they were building the Tower of Babel? And these were ungodly people who were trying to build this big structure to reach heaven. And they're doing a pretty good job. And all of a sudden, God said in Genesis eleven six, he said, this is just the beginning of what they will do. He said, now nothing they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. Nothing you have imagined you can do will be impossible for you. But you have to imagine it, right? You know, you've probably heard this story about Disney World. You know, I got all kinds of toys up here in my briefcase. <laughs> you never know what's going to come out. But have you heard the story of Disney World when they had their grand opening in Orlando, Florida? Did you know that Walt Disney wasn't even alive when Disney World opened? He'd already passed away. And they had this big ceremony, all these people in attendance. It's the grand opening of Disney World. And the MC is standing on the stage, and he pointed to Miss Disney, who was sitting out in the crowd. He said, Miss Disney, don't you just wish that Walt could have seen all this? They said she stood up, and she said, he did. Well, where did he see it? In his imagination, right? He saw everything in here before it ever showed up out here. Well, you have to do the same thing. You have to imagine yourself. You know, I told the first service, you have to imagine yourself walking across the stage with your cap and gown, getting your degree. You got to see it on the inside. Those of you who are believing for a baby, you have to imagine yourself pregnant. Imagine yourself walking down the aisle getting married. Imagine yourself standing on the scale and liking the number you see. I like that one, don't you? You got to imagine, you know, logging into your bank account and you see $5,000, $10,000 in your savings account that you don't even need. That's just emergency money set aside. Can you imagine that? If you can't imagine it, you'll never have it. So God is the one who gave us this ability to dream, to think, and to imagine. In fact, Albert Einstein said, your imagination is everything. He said it's simply a preview of life's coming attractions. So you think about when you go to the movies and you watch a preview. You don't see the whole film. You just see a preview of something that's about to happen, right? Well, see, that's what happens when you sit with God and you just imagine what would be the greatest year of my life? Okay, ready for my next point? Number three is you got to put pen to paper. I brought my Texas size pencil so you won't forget this. So you have to put pen to paper. And let me say, this right here is one of the single most important keys to success. Right here is grab a pen and paper and write your dreams and goals. You know, it's been proven that if you will write your dreams and goals, don't leave them in your head, your chance of success increases by 44% just by the fact that you do this. And what's amazing to me, every successful person I've studied, every successful person I know, they do this. Beyonce does this, Jim Carrey does it, Justin Timberlake, Lady Gaga, what's the, the MMA fighter? Conor McGregor does this. I mean, I could go down the list of successful people who do this, but it all came from God's word. God's the one who said in Habakkuk 2, 2, write the vision, make it plain on paper. Why? So you can run towards it. So this is called the power of the pen, right? I shared this with the first service, how some of you, have you heard of this guy named John the Bones Jones? Some of you men may have heard of him. Back in 2009 and 2010, he would sign his name as the UFC champion in 2011. Like he would sign his name as the champion in the future. And people would say to him, how do you have the audacity to sign your name as the champion in the future? And you know what he said? Every time I write it, I believe it even more. Well, do you know John the Bones Jones became the youngest champion in UFC history in May of 2011? Write the vision, make it plain, right? 
In fact, let me share with you real quick. There was a professor at Virginia Tech named Dr. David Cole, and he did research on successful people and goal setting. And he said he just walked up to random people on the street and he just asked them one question. He said, what are your goals for life? What are your goals? He said 80% of the people he asked said, I don't know, I don't have any goals. So think of 80% of people walking around with no goals, no vision. What did Proverbs say? Where there is no vision, people are perishing. He said 16% said, I have some goals, but I've never written them down. 3% said, I've written my goals at some point, but I don't know where they are. 1% said, I have goals, I've written them down, and I review them on a consistent basis. He said, do you know who the 1% are? Millionaires. And he said, the clues these millionaires gave us, number one, I have goals. Number two, I take the time to write them down. I don't leave them in my head. And number three, I'm constantly looking at them. We can do this, can't we? So when I started learning these things, like Jim Carrey did this and it worked, how much more should it work for me as a believer if I actually do what God said to do? Write the vision, make it plain. So that's my next point. Here's the, the next thing I want to share with you about this, is you need to express your dreams in pictures. Express your dreams in pictures. Did you notice that I have pictures in here? The reason why is because your mind thinks in pictures, it doesn't think in words. So if I say the word dress, you're not picturing D-R-E-S-S. -S. You imagine a dress. If I say a white dress with a big yellow belt and little pink flowers, I think it sounds amazing, but that's not my point. My point is <laughs> that every word that I add, it paints a clearer picture, right? Well, see, when you add pictures to your dreams and goals, it causes your faith to go to a whole new level. But even scientifically, they've proven that it causes your subconscious mind to think that it's real. Your mind thinks nothing more than that's reality, so make it happen. Isn't that amazing? So I was telling the service earlier how when I was just learning this, because for years of my life, I was just existing. I was in a rut. I was living paycheck to paycheck. I had no money in my savings account. My house was a mess. I was a mess. I had no vision for my life. And all of a sudden, I started learning what I'm sharing with you today. And I went in my little guest bedroom and just started giving myself permission to dream. And my dreams started getting bigger and bigger. First, it was like pay off the credit card, get the house cleaned up pay off, you know, I just started dreaming and setting goals. Well, then as I started growing and my dreams started happening, I started dreaming bigger. So one day I was talking to Isaiah here who works with me and I said, God put it in my heart to start a women's conference in the Dallas Fort Worth area and call it icing. And I, I, you know, when I was sitting in a conference like this, I just heard the word icing, and I thought, dear God, I'm hungry. But then the Lord told me, no, that's the name of the conference. And I thought, what does icing mean? So I looked up the word icing. Icing means something added to something good to make it even better. Like the cake is good, but the icing makes it better. So I realized God was teaching me that it's one thing to have a dream for your life. But when you discover God's plan for your life, that's the icing on the cake. So I told Isaiah, I said, my vision is to minister to thousands of people in an arena. I said, I don't see 25 women in a hotel ballroom. I see thousands of women. So Isaiah said, well, you've never preached to thousands of women. I said, well, can you make a picture? So he went to Joyce Meyer's conference, and he printed out this picture of Joyce Meyer, but he did a little Photoshop. He took Joyce off the stage, little Joyce, and he put little Terry right there. <laughs> can y'all see that? And then he put icing in the background. And then on these big jumbo screens, he chopped off Joyce's head and put my head. So I've got Joyce's yellow shirt on. So <laughs> he printed this out and he said, is this your vision? And I laughed and thought this was the funniest, cutest thing, you know, little Terry, little Joyce. But I said, yes, that's my vision. Now keep in mind, I didn't have big invitations to come to Michigan and speak to thousands of people back then. I just had a dream in my heart that looked laughable and looked ridiculous. So I told Isaiah, would you print several copies? I want the whole team to see where we're going. So I printed it out to some of my friends and told them, you know, this is what we're believing God for. And of course, they all laughed and thought this was so cute. But here's what I want you to know. 
this picture hangs on my vision board. My desk faces my vision board. So every day I'm looking at this picture, right? Well, after you look at it for a few months, I'm not just cracking up anymore every time I see the picture. Well, then a few more months go by, you forget that it's a fake picture. Then a few more months go by, it actually looks kind of real. Well, remember what I told you earlier? You become what you behold. Whatever you keep before your eyes, it will eventually show up in your life. This is a fake picture. Here's a real picture of me preaching to thousands. Is that amazing? So what is the picture, what is the image that you need to put in front of your eyes? Because you become what you behold. And you know, it's very important that you're not vague about what you're believing God for. You know, vague goals produce vague results. I heard Creflo Dollar make this statement. He said, if Jesus himself showed up in your living room tonight and said, how much money do you need to get out of debt? He said, if you can't answer him, you're not serious about getting out of debt. But if you said, Jesus, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> I need $4,556.12. Then you're serious about getting out of debt, right? Do y'all remember the minister, the, the late Kenneth Hagin? Some of you remember him? You know, he said that years ago, he would see people praying at the altar, and he would gently tap them on the shoulder, and he'd say, sweetheart, what are you praying for? What are you praying about? And he said so many times he'd hear people say, oh, nothing in particular. He'd say, then that's exactly what you're going to get, nothing in particular. No, be specific about what you're believing God say. Say, Lord, I'm believing God that... You know, my school loans are paid in full. I'm believing God that I weigh my ideal body weight of this amount. I'm believing I graduate from this university. So you have to imagine it. I believe I'm the number one realtor in my city. I believe that I have $12,000 in my savings account. So be very specific about what you're believing God for. You got it? Okay, next point I wanna make is you have to speak to the vision. You know, this is how we release our faith is with the words of our mouth, right? Well, God said in Romans 4, 17, it says, we serve a God, I don't know which translation you have, but we serve a God who gives life to the dead and speaks of non-existent things as if they exist. Another translation says, call those things that be not as though they already are, right? Now, what's amazing is, again, successful people have stumbled upon this. Steve Harvey does this. Oprah Winfrey does this. Tim Tebow, Susie Orman, Will Smith, Lady Gaga, all of them. They practice this. They use positive affirmations about how they want their life to go. But it came from God's Word. Isn't that amazing? Every success principle that works, works because it came from the Word of God. So this is a two-step process. Number one, stop speaking negatively. And number two, start speaking positively. Let me tell you why. The Bible also says that we are snared by the words of our mouth. That's a Texas-sized mousetrap right there. <laughs> we are snared by the words of our mouth. I'm not sure where that scripture is. What's it say? Proverbs? Is it 6-2? Okay, we're snared by the words of our mouth. So a snare is nothing more than a trap. So I want you to think about this. When God says something, he means it. So when you're saying things like, you know, I guess at this rate, I'll never get married. Okay, you just trapped yourself into never getting married. No matter what I do, I can't lose weight. You just trapped yourself into never losing weight. I guess we'll be in debt for the rest of our lives. You just trapped yourself into being in debt forever. When God says something, he means it. We're trapped by the words of our mouth. So this is a two-step thing. Stop speaking negatively, but start speaking positively. So you have to use your words in the direction you want your life to go. I was telling the first service that every time I walked in a bookstore, I would point to the shelves and say, my books are on that shelf in Jesus' name. You know, getting on the scales, thank you, Jesus, I'm not moved by what I see. I weigh my perfect body weight in Jesus' name. You just call those things that be not as though they already are. In fact, this is a phrase that I learned a couple years ago, and I want you to hang on to this because this will help you to identify if what you're saying is helping you or hurting you. Practice making this statement after every phrase, and that's just the way I want it. No matter what I do, can't lose weight, and that's just the way I want it. I guess we'll never have any money, 
and that's just the way I want it. I guess I'll never get the promotion, and it's just the way I want it. If it's not the way you want it, then don't let it come out of your mouth, right? Change what you're saying, and you'll change what you're seeing. You got it? Okay. Y'all doing good? I got some hand claps. <laughs> okay, the other point I want to make real quick, and I want you to notice that everything I've shared with you so far, and we're about to wrap this up, is it all involves one word, and that word is action. You know, I heard Jack Canfield make this statement. He said, one thing that separates winners from losers more than anything else is winners take action. They get up and they do what needs to be done. No matter what that is, if it's typing the resume, joining the gym, saving money from this week's paycheck, going for a walk, writing your first chapter, they take action. In fact, I like to illustrate it like this. You know, I brought this Imagine Big kit, and it has my book in it, Imagine Big, where I teach you how to dream and set goals and all that stuff. And then I have a dream book in here, just like mine, Spiral Notebook, where you can put pictures of what you're believing God for. And I've got samples of how I do it to get you started. And then I have five audio messages in here, how to conquer procrastination, how to elevate your desire to even want to go after your dreams because desire is the number one motivating factor behind your success, right? If you really want something, you'll get it. If you don't really want it, you won't get it. And then there's a message on goal setting and how you could be missing out on stuff because you've never asked God for it. The Bible says you have not because you ask not, right? So how many of you feel like this could help you just kind of get a head start and get moving this year? There you go. <laughs> she was ready. <laughs> so I illustrated that to say how she took action, didn't she? And really, aside from just taking action, what I've discovered is that taking action involves getting out of your comfort zone. You know, I'm more, my personality is more the type that I would be sitting somewhere else and I would never get up and run in front of people. But I've discovered that if I'm going to achieve my dreams, I've got to get comfortably, comfortable being uncomfortable, right? So just remember that, to take action. So my final point this morning, y'all doing okay? Okay, my final point is you've got to be extremely committed. Extremely committed if you're really going to achieve your dreams and goals. You know, I'm going to illustrate with this. I've got this toy golf club, but we're going to pretend it's real, okay? So let's just imagine that this golf club is put in the hands of someone like Tiger Woods. Well, let's put it in Tiger's hands. How many of you know that instantly the value of the golf club goes up dramatically? Someone who's been swinging a golf club since he was three years old, 12 years old, 18 years old, do you know the only thing you added was commitment? Tiger is extremely committed to his vision to be the greatest golfer that ever lived. He's extremely committed, right? Well, same thing with this. I've got some paper here and a pencil. You put a pen and paper in the hands of someone like Taylor Swift, instantly the value shoots up, right? Someone who's been crafting songs since she was five years old, playing guitar since she was 12, the highest paid celebrity under 30 at one time. All you added was commitment. Taylor Swift is extremely committed to her craft to be one of the greatest songwriters that ever lived. Well, to be honest with you, this is just a spiral notebook with a place to put my dreams and goals and document my progress. But you put this spiral notebook in the hands of Terry Savelle Foy, and instantly, this becomes a roadmap. It becomes a GPS for me to live my dreams. All you added was commitment. When you get committed, that's when you're going to live your dreams. In fact, they say it only takes one diet to lose weight. Do you know which one? The one you stick with, they all work. Just stick with one, right? <laughs> so when you get committed, that's when you're going to live your dreams. So let me close out with this story that you may have heard. But I love this story because it really pulls all this together. And it was about this professional golfer who lives here in America. And he was hired by the king of Saudi Arabia to fly over there and teach him how to play golf. So this king, he sent a private jet over here, picked up the pro golfer, and he spent a few days over there just teaching this king how to play. Well, at the end of the trip, the king said to the pro golfer, he said, 
I really want to bless you for coming all the way over here and teaching me all this. He said, what can I give you? Pro golfer said, nothing, seriously. He said, this was just an honor to come and do this. You don't owe me anything. The king said, no, I insist. I want to give you something. What do you like? So the pro golfer said, well, I guess a golf club. He said, I collect golf clubs. So the king said, a golf club it is. So the pro golfer got back on the plane. He's flying back to America. He said he put his head against the window, and he's just sort of wondering, what is this going to look like? I mean, after all, he is the king. He said, is it going to be like gold-plated or diamond-studded? He's just imagining the most expensive golf club. We well, said he got home, and every day he'd go outside, check the front door, and there's no golf club. So one day he goes to the mailbox, and there's a certified letter in the box, and this is what it said from Saudi Arabia. It says, you are now the owner of a 500-acre, 18-hole golf club here in America. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm just saying kings think differently, don't they? <laughs> We think golf club, and they think golf club. <laughs> so here's my point. We serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and I believe God would send me from Dallas just to tell you today, dream as big as you can, and God will go beyond that. Your dreams do not intimidate God. You got it? I love that story. So, here's what I want to say real quick. Tonight, I know some of you will be coming back tonight, but I was praying about what to share tonight, and I'm going to share with you four more keys about how to build your faith to go after your impossible dreams. Because the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith, right? And, you know, sometimes you see people who are believing God to put gas in their car, and others are believing for millions of dollars, and you think, how do they, I don't understand, how can they believe for millions and I'm believing to pay rent? I'm going to show you exactly what I have learned that has caused me to go from being a miserable person at home with no vision, being in debt, credit cards, paying my car loans, to I went from ghost writing books for other people to authoring books. I went from attending conferences to speaking at conferences. I went from watching TV for hours after work to hosting a TV show. Why? Because I began to learn how to build my faith for big dreams. So I was praying about tonight, and those of you who will be here, here's what I want to ask you to do. I want you to bring your top three dreams and goals. I want you to write them down, because this will hold you accountable, right? Write down your top three dreams and goals that you're believing God for this year, and we're going to pray together because there is power in prayer. Does that sound good? So just write your top three. I know Pastor Jeannie has 50, but you need to narrow it down to three for tonight. <laughs> narrow it down for tonight, and we're going to come together, and we're going to pray over those, and then I'm going to show you how to build your faith to go after those dreams. Does that sound good? Okay, let me close out with this. I was sharing this in the first service. Got my giant whistle here. Did y'all like my toys? Because this is my first time here, so you probably weren't used to me whipping out toys, right? <laughs> um, have you ever watched an NFL football game and you see that referee with the black and white striped shirt on and he has a whistle around his neck? And I want you to notice sometimes the referee, sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, but you may see a ref up there who's five foot six and he's like 140 pounds. But all of a sudden he blows a whistle and a 350 pound linebacker will stand at attention. And you think, what kind of power does that little ref have over that big linebacker? And here's what it is. The linebacker knows that the moment that referee blows that whistle, he's not coming in his own strength and power. He has all of the NFL backing him up, right? Well, do you know the same thing happens in the spirit realm when you call on the name of Jesus? You're not trying to be successful on your own. You're not trying to achieve your dreams and goals. You now have all of heaven backing you up. So I want to say right now, for those of you who have never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or you're ready for a rededication today, this is your defining moment. February 21st is your defining moment to blow the whistle and to call on heaven to help you do what you could never do on your own. 
So how about as we're closing out, let's stand up. And I just want to address some of you who feel like God is speaking to you today, that it's time for a new beginning. You're tired of struggling and trying to be successful on your own. Maybe you're just tired of being miserable on the inside. You know, why don't we all just close our eyes for just a minute? And you feel like God is speaking to you today. I want you to raise your hand and let me just see who we're talking to. You're ready for this new beginning. You're ready to make Jesus the Lord of your life. I see hands going up all over the place. You're ready for a a fresh start. I mean, we still got a lot of year left. Let's make it the best year you've ever had. And this is where it starts. Thank you, Jesus. I see all those hands going up. What a dramatic difference you are about to have in your life. Thank you, Jesus. And the balcony. I'm so grateful God sent me here from Dallas just for this moment right here. So why don't we all just lift our hands along with them. And we're going to pray this prayer out loud. So y'all just repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. I ask you to forgive me. I declare Jesus is the Son of God. He died on the cross for me. I ask you into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I declare today, February 21st, is my new beginning. I make my dreams bigger than my memories. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You did it. Yay! It was that easy. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Thank Thank you, Pastor. You may be seated for a moment. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you just gave your life to the Lord, this is your new day. Would you please text the number that's on your screen, 616-226-3922, whether you're online, whether you're here, please text that number. We want to be praying for you, want to help you in your new life in Christ. Keep on growing. Say, I wanted to mention a couple of things. First of all, uh, Terry has a resource table back in what we refer to as the community room. So uh, if you're in the balcony, you'd have to come down. But uh, I'm telling you, her, she's a good speaker, but she's even a better writer. I mean, it, her books are just amazing. And I'm telling you that because I know they'll help. Uh, it's kind of like uh, what, what we're doing right now is, is, you know, she just gave us a great word and gave us a great meal. But what you get to do when you take the books home is it's like you bring a whole month's worth of meals home. It, it will, it was going to bless you. And then I just wanted to read a little bit from third John. It says, dear friends, you're doing a good work for God when you're taking care of the traveling teachers and missionaries that are passing through. They told the church here of your friendship and your loving deeds. And I'm glad when you send them on their way with a generous gift. So we ourselves should take care of them in order that we may become partners with them in the Lord's work. So. I first of all want to thank you for your giving to the church. You guys are phenomenal. We appreciate it so much. And you have a part in everything that we're doing all around the world. But uh, when we have a guest, we like to do like it tells us in 3 John, we're supposed to send them on their way with a generous gift. And if today you would like to sow into Terry's ministry, when you give, What you need to do is on the memo, either your check or the envelope, or uh, when when you're online, just in that middle, just put Terry or Terry Foy on there, and we'll see to it that she receives that check. One check as she leaves. Let's uh, let's just, let me just pray for you as we finish. Father, we thank you for the word that we have heard. And we pray, Father, that that word will bring forth fruit in each and every one of our lives. And Father, and we pray for the blessing of the Lord to rest on every person just as it did on Joseph. Lord, that your blessing will be on whatever happens in the house, whatever happens in the field, whatever happens in our families. We thank you for your blessing and your increase in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you guys.
Thanks for tuning in. For more information, live services, and prayer opportunities throughout the week, go to reslife.org and stay tuned to our social media pages. It was great to worship with you today, and we will see you again soon.